Hey, kindergartners, it's time for us to have some story time again together. I'm so excited to be with you today. And I have a book that I'm just excited to read to you. It's called The Diary of a Worm. Now this book is written by a person named Doreen Cronin. And the illustrations, that's the pictures, are by Harry Bliss. So it looks like Doreen and Harry work together as collaborators to create the story and the illustrations. Have you ever heard of a diary? Now, a diary is so cool because when you have a diary, it's like your own journal and you can actually write down things that you're thinking in your head that maybe you're not saying out loud to other people but you want to keep your thoughts, your questions, your ideas, recorded in your own journal, and that can be called a diary. So we're gonna read all about the diary of a worm. What do you think the worm's ideas or thoughts or questions are? We're gonna figure that out today, okay? Before we do that though, I want us to think about the reading strategies that we've been using as readers all year long in school. So we've been talking about how when we're at home right now, our parents might not know all of those strategies that we've been learning at school, and we have to show them that we have super reader strategies. So when we are super readers, we don't just sit and like look at a book and you know, glance at it for a minute and then go away. Oh no. We have some major skills and strategies we use. So one of the first strategies we've been thinking about is using pointer power, pointing to each word. Um, now, sometimes we, I say tap, tap, tap. That can relate to a word. That can relate to the sounds within a word. When we use pointer power, we're tapping under each word and knowing that there is a word for each tap that we make. Do you know what else we can do as super readers? We can have picture power. This says the dog ran fast. If I got stuck on that word dog, what could I do? Oh, you're so right. I could look at the picture and it probably will help me think about what this D sound is about in this word dog. Now, Another one that we used in class a lot when we had reading partners, and you can still use this strategy at home with your brother or your sister or any family members, is partner power. When you use partner power, you use a partner to read with you and you help each other. Maybe you ask them to help you sound out a word. Maybe you talk about what you're reading. Partners can be good helpers for us. So that could be an adult, that could be a kid, could be a stuffy. All right, we also have reread power. So you might see me do this in this book that I'm gonna read. If I get stuck on a sentence, like if I'm reading, I, k, e, n, r, e, d, r, e, that gets kind of like hard for me to know the whole sentence. So once I stretch um, out the sounds and words and sound them out, I might go back and say, I can read. Oh yeah, that makes sense. We also have been talking about snap word power, like and, or the, or I. And today, I want to talk about sound power. So when we say a word out loud, we're making the sounds that are blended into a word. This word that this person is hearing with their ears is f, a, uh, n. Mm. What are those three sounds all together? F, a, uh, n. Mm. Fun. We have sound power. So if you see today that I get caught up on a tricky word, I might try one of those strategies. I might try all of those strategies, but I especially might try sound power. And sound power might go like this. Diary. 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 See, when you say those sounds out loud and your ears hear them and your brain thinks about them, then you can figure out what that word is. Diary of a worm. All right. We might read part of this today. It's quite a long book. So we might do the idea of reading part of it today and part of it next time. But here's the first um, title page. And then I always love looking at the end pages. So it looks like in this worm's diary, he or she adds some pictures, maybe even some drawings. 
This one says me and spider. This one says my first tunnel. Ooh, so some important things in Worm's life. All right, ooh, another title page, Diary of a Worm. Title pages sometimes give us clues about the story, so take a close look at that. Okay, remember what you're watching for? You are watching for me using my sound power. And whenever you see or hear me using my sound power, you're gonna wiggle your ears. And you might even say out loud, sound power. Let's try it. Sound power. All right, let's go for it. March 20th. Mom says there are three things I should always, oh, this is a tricky word. Remember. Remember. Did I use it? Sound power. Mom says there are three things I should always remember. Ooh, I did my reread power too. The earth gives us everything we need. It's a close up look. Two, when we dig tunnels, we help take care of the earth. And here's Worm digging a tunnel and he's thinking, must make tunnel, help earth breathe. Ooh, we help the earth breathe by making tunnels. Three, never bother daddy when he is eating the, oh, what is he eating? Mm, ooh, eh. Ooh, pay a news pay a per per. Are you hearing sound power? Sound power newspaper. Never bother daddy when he is eating the newspaper. What? And this says shop. <laughs> All right, that's March 20th entry. Three things that we should know as worms. The earth gives us everything we need. We dig tunnels to help the earth breathe. Never bother daddy when he is eating the newspaper. I thought it would maybe say reading the newspaper. March 29th. Today, I tried to teach Spider how to dig. Here's the worm digging a hole. Here's the spider with the thinking bubble and I see a question mark in there. I wonder if he has a question about how to dig. Do spiders dig? I don't know, I think that's the worm's job. First, all of his legs got stuck. Oh no. And here's his speech bubble. It says, I think I've twisted one of my ankles. Then he swallowed, swallowed sound power. Then he swallowed a bunch of dirt. Oh, he's swallowing that dirt. Oh no. And it says, I give up. That, that worm's like, I give up teaching you how to do it. Tomorrow, he's going to teach me how to walk upside down. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm using my sound power. I'm using my picture power too, even if you didn't notice it. March 30th, this is the next day. Worms cannot walk upside down. How do we know that? Do we need to use our picture power right now to make some inferences about why worms cannot walk upside down? Ooh, I bet you're thinking out there about why they can't walk upside down. Why not? Why not? Hmm, okay. April 4th. We're gonna read this page and one more page, and then that's where we're gonna stop for today. So be listening for me using my sound power during this next part. April 4th. Ish. I know that's shh. I know that sound. Ish. Ing. I know ing is mm. Fish. Fishing. Was that sound power? Fishing season started today. We all dig, dug deeper. Ooh, why would they dig deeper? 
during fishing season. They don't want to get caught as bait. This says bait. And look, here's this, here's this shovel coming down. Who's using that shovel, do you think? Oh, are you making the inference I'm making? That there is a person on the other end of the shovel and they are digging in the ground to get what? Worms. And worms, when they're used for bait, what happens to them during fishing season? Oh, they get put on the end of poles and then, they, and then the fish eat them. So they're trying to protect themselves. Let's see, they dug deeper, it says. Did you guys hear something? And they're way down here in this arrow says grandpa oh yep grandpa and then here's these ones i love all the details in this book because it's like we're really living in the worm world all right let's read april 10th it rained all night and the ground was soaked we spent the n Ta tire entire entire sound power we spent the entire day on the sidewalk hopscotch is a very dangerous game why is hopscotch a dangerous game oh they don't want to get stepped on you're so right all right, I'm gonna put a bookmark right here. Next time we'll read about April 15th diary entry. And it looks like somebody's having some munching going on on this paper. So we'll be back to read more of this at next read aloud time. But when you go off to read today, I want you to try to use your sound power. And what that means is when you come to a tricky word, just like when I came to that word entire, and it kind of like tricked up my eyes for a minute. I used my sound power by taking each letter one at a time and making the sounds I heard. So let's try it together. Let's try the word, let's try the word worm because that might be a tricky one. Worm. That's kind of funny because we don't say warm. We say worm. That's right, that R is kind of being bossy about that O. But that's okay. Let's try it one more time. Warm. We're using our sound power when we make the sounds and then we put those sounds blended together. We've done that in class with our fingers. We've done that on our arms. We've done that a lot of ways. When you go off to read today, I want to hear a little bit about how you used sound power to sound something out, making the sounds and then blending those sounds together. You can take a video of yourself reading. You can speak into the microphone and tell me or show me some of your reading, or you could even take a camera picture of yourself reading. I can't wait to hear your sound power. Bye.